Hello and <coughs> hello and welcome back to Bites of History with Irene Walton. I'm your host, Irene Walton. Today we're talking about deviled eggs. <laughs> Have you ever wondered how it made it to your table? Have you ever wondered how it made it to your shelf? If you love food, then this is the show for you. Bites of History with Irene. Thank you guys so much for joining. I'm so happy to be filming this episode. If you guys haven't been following me on Instagram or TikTok or YouTube shorts, people go on there. I have been creating a lot of new recipes and the new recipes I've been creating are for the new series that I started called the United Eggs of America, where I am making a deviled egg based on every state in the United States of America. We did California, Hawaii, and Texas. And I'm so excited because there's still 47 eggs left to go. I have really been loving it. A, I really love deviled eggs, which is so funny because a video I did 18,000 years ago uh, with my friends Riley and Jeff, we all talked about how we didn't like deviled eggs. Is this also a bad time to bring up the fact that I don't like deviled eggs? <laughs> I don't like deviled eggs either. <laughs> but as my tastes have changed over the years, they've become like one of my favorite appetizers of all time. And it's just good. It's just fun to see how you, stuff you like changes. <laughs> I say that like it's this fascinating thought. Like I'm the first person who's ever said that in the world. I thought it was only appropriate to tell you guys a little bit about the history of deviled eggs because in each episode, I try to give a little bit and bite of history anyway, because that's fun. And I love that. I think you guys kind of like it too. At least that's the, that's, that's the uh, response I'm getting in the comments. So we're going to stick to it. So let's start today with thanking our spot or you know, it's, I keep accidentally saying it because I know what's going to happen. Let's start today with thanking our sources. I got a lot of my information from ncegg.org. I believe that was from North Carolina and altoharley.com as well as Wikipedia. Let's get started with the history of deviled eggs. We will start at the beginning and end at the end. I feel like that might just be the most appropriate way to do it. The deviled egg, like our last episode of the fruitcake, starts in ancient Rome. Can you imagine how? You don't have to, because I'm going to tell you. So you may be not as surprised as I was finding out that deviled eggs started in ancient Rome, but I was truly shocked. I thought it was some cool mid-century like farmer's wife being a genius and coming up with some amazing recipe that we've kind of adapted into American culture. But like most things, this started way before I'm imagining it did. <laughs> so the way that it starts in ancient Rome is not quite what we imagine a deviled egg to be, but it does seem to be the first occurrence of a boiled egg being altered. So what we're seeing in ancient Rome is these eggs being boiled with lots of spices and sauces actually in the boiling liquid. So this flavor was being imparted into the egg before it was even cracked open, which as I found through a lot of my research in the deviled egg lexicon. Some people really do like to add some stuff to the water because they feel like it does permeate the shell and get into the egg itself, altering the flavor. And so I guess the ancient Romans were way ahead of us on this. Something we do have in common with the ancient Romans though, is that they also served these boiled eggs, these spiced boiled eggs as an appetizer, because back then these, their feasts used to be so extravagant and luxurious and take the whole day. They actually had a saying, I'm going to read it so I don't mess it up. I will mess it up anyway, but I want to read it so I can get Closer. Abova usque ad mala. Abova usque ad mala, which means from eggs to apples, indicating like that's how they would kind of start the meal. They would present these eggs and say that phrase, and it would go from eggs to apples because apples would traditionally be traditionally be the dessert course of the meal, which was super fun to learn. Also, I just love them. I would like, oh my god, to go back in time and sit at like an ancient Roman feast and see like what's similar and what's different and just all those things. But anyway, so they were kind of ushering you into the meal with like, hey, we're going to be here from eggs to apples. Like, I hope you're prepared to stay all day, which anytime I see deviled eggs, I also intend on staying all day. So they had something going there. So as our eggs being spiced and sauced and tossed around, we then get to the 1300s in what we now know as Spain. And they kind of have their own version of 
futzing with this boiled egg. So what they do is they do cut it in half, but they pop out the yolks like we do today. It's And again, it's this really cool thing to like something I've been doing so much of lately, like cutting an egg, popping the yolk, doing that over and over, knowing that somebody in like 1300 Spain was doing that exact same process, always kind of like makes me feel grounded. I love it. So they would do that and they would then take the yolks and smash them together with a lot of spices. So they would do coriander, cilantro, which I know those are the same thing, but I'm imagining the coriander seed and the cilantro like leaf, Um, onion juice, fermented fish sauce. They would pound this all together. So they didn't really have a binding agent like mayo and mustard that we would use today, but they did make stuff happen with that fish sauce and with the onion juice. So they were also creating this like pasty, yolky, spiced mixture that they did put back into the boil boiled half whites, but they would secure it back together with sticks to like create the egg shape again. So the yolk was just now spiced and yummy and delicious, closed back together, and then they would top it with a bunch of pepper. So that's how they would eat their deviled eggs. Now in the 1600s in Europe, we start to see deviled eggs come into cookbooks, like actual written recipes for them. And these were not exactly like we're super used to today, but I mean, truly everyone does their deviled eggs differently. So maybe, you know, people in in medieval England were like, what are they doing over in medieval Ireland? Why are they putting cheese in their egg? Anyway, it's like how we all have our allegiances to like what our family did growing up. You're like, you put relish in your deviled eggs and you're like, you don't. Well, in medieval Europe, in these cookbooks, we would see a lot of different types of flavor profiles. Some are even sort of sweet with like a cheese and raisin mixture being written down for some recipes. Some were much more herbaceous. They had parsley and mint. Some were deep fried. Some were covered in sugar. So we were seeing tons of different variations of this boiled egg dish. Now, if you're wondering why I haven't said deviled egg yet, which maybe I have, Couldn't tell you. But if I haven't, good for me. I was thinking ahead. And if I have, disregard it. But if you're wondering why I haven't said deviled egg yet, deviled eggs don't become a dish because deviled hasn't been invented as a term until about the 1700s, where to devil means to heavily spice or make something very hot. So now that we have this term to devil or deviling something, we can see how adding all of these different spices into our yolk mixture would allow an egg to be one of these deviled food items. So we're seeing deviled eggs kind of come to popularity in the 1700s, 1800s, but they were oftentimes still being called stuffed eggs. In France, they were called mimosa eggs, and a lot of places called them dressed eggs. You'll still hear these terms throughout parts of the world and parts of the country. Some people just don't like to say devil. They don't like to bring that word into their lives. Love that, respect that. So some people call them angel eggs. There are a lot of different names for this dish, but that's how we got the term deviled egg. Now, the first ever printed American recipe for deviled eggs is in an 1877 Montgomery, Alabama newspaper, and that was called the Montgomery Advisor. That's our first recipe we ever see in America for deviled eggs. And then in 1896, the Fanny Foster Boston Cooking School cookbook comes out. A lot of classic recipes come from this cookbook. We can do a whole episode on it if you guys are interested. I know I am, so I probably will. Um, But Fanny is the first one that we see add mayonnaise into this mixture. So mayo becomes this major binding component, really, really popular in the recipe. And that's kind of how people continue making deviled eggs from 1896 on with obviously lots of variations, but mayo gets introduced then. And we continue to see deviled eggs have a pretty solid amount of consistency in the American culinary zeitgeist throughout the years leading up to now, especially. In 1923, the Times Recorder writer, this is a newspaper coming out of Zanesville, Ohio, Wanda Barton has an article called Homemaking Helps. In one of these, she lets us know that keeping your egg cartons is a great way to kind of carry deviled eggs from party to party. So people are coming up with little ideas on how to make this appetizer even more mobile than it is because they are slippery little suckers. And so even in 1923, people are talking about deviled eggs, making up recipes for deviled eggs, making sure people can bring deviled eggs to the party safely. I know we touched on the different names and types of deviled eggs throughout the world, but some fun ones that I thought would be interesting to talk about are those mimosa eggs in France. They actually 
have a filling and then like a yolk mixture kind of squished on top of it. So it sort of looks like spaghetti. I'll put a picture here. I obviously need to try to make those because they're very beautiful. In Sweden, they have what looks to be, oh my gosh, such a delicious variation on deviled eggs where their fillings have caviar and sour cream and red onion. So I feel like it would be such a perfect salty, like yummy bite. Um, in Hungary, they actually mix their yolks with like milk soaked bread and parsley. So there are so many different types of this deviled egg dish that goes all the way back to ancient Rome. And I just think we've had so much fun with what truly is like a perfect food. Like a hard boiled egg is so delicious on its own. But I love learning about how we've changed it and how we've kind of made it even better throughout the years. And I'm so excited to get to be a part of someone trying something new with something so classic. So if you guys want to follow along with that journey, you can follow me anywhere I make content, which is YouTube, uh, Instagram, TikTok. I am putting my deviled eggs all over all of those platforms. And I would love, love, love to hear your thoughts, what state you're in, what you think should be in that state's egg. Also, I mean, if this, if people like it, maybe we'll do countries too. That'd be fun. But yeah, I kind of got inspired because when I did the weird food laws in every state video, I was like, I really liked learning about every state. And I had so much fun doing that. So how can I kind of bring back that traditional, like, vintage Americana feel with something that I'm passionate about, which is eggs. Thank you guys so much for watching. I had so much fun sharing this info about deviled eggs with you. I hope you liked this episode. If you did, please like this video, comment down below, share it with a friend, share it with that one friend who eats like nine deviled eggs at every function that you bring them to. I think they might like it. And I just love y'all so much. I hope you have the most wonderful day. I hope it's not too, too cold where you are. And if it is, I'm wishing you lots of warmth and I hope your water stays on and I hope your electricity stays on and your Wi-Fi. and I love you and have a good day.